All right, so I'm going to pay 10 and cast Jin Kataxius. <sighs> God damn it. Well, hold up. What does that card do again? It's, uh, it's, you know, that, uh, that uh, one card that does... You know, it's the one that changes hand sizes. I'm just gonna look it up. Okay. All right, so test real quick. No, no, everything looks good. Uh, well, okay. Take a look at my enormous penis. All right, that's all I want to say. All right, thanks, Sean. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. Welcome back to the Geek and Speak podcast. Uh, I am Morgan. Today, I got Sean. I got Steven. Hi. We got the main squad here today. Uh, we're doing audio only again because my room's a disaster. Uh, apologies. But that's okay, because we all know that you actually didn't really want to see Steven's nose. Uh, <laughs> 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 three. <laughs> um, so uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, some of our favorite Magic the Gathering cards. Um, it's Morphin Time. It's Morphin Time. And a lot of this is going to come down to not even cards that we think are like the best cards. That's not this conversation. This is cards that we enjoy because they they foster to our preferred play style or we have like a, a nice story story that goes behind it like maybe it was a card that we played early on in our careers this is or maybe we just like the art uh this is really just a matter of cards we like it's not a, a conversation about what we think the best cards are um before we dive into this uh conversation though let us know in the comments what some of your favorite magic cards are and why uh steven why don't you start us off real quick uh tell me Maybe a good place to start to make this easy to understand. Maybe talk about your favorite deck that you've ever played and then maybe like the goal of the deck and then maybe some of your favorite cards from that. But that might be a good place to start. Uh, <laughs> Great start. Well, OK. <laughs> now, thanks, Stephen, for telling us. All right, Morgan. No. <laughs> um, so when we started playing Magic, it was during the um, Shadows Over Innistrad and Midnight Hunt. Or not Midnight Hunt, um, Eldritch Moon, my bad. Uh, and so... Wrong Innistrad. I love... Yeah, it's in Innistrad. Uh, and so I like a lot of the themes in that set, especially... Sorry, didn't mean to... I especially really like Werewolves and Eldrazi. Um, so I ended up building... Uh, when it was in Standard, I had a, a Werewolf Standard deck. Um, and it wasn't that good. But... Uh, I ended up turning it into a commander deck with uh, Tovalar as the commander now. And that's just... With him as a commander, it's just... A, it's changed the game of werewolves. I mean, it's it's so good. Tovalar is almost too good, but there's a lot of commanders that they've made recently where they've kind of gotten lazy. It's like three or four mana, do a thing, draw a card. And it's like, oh... How original. There's so many commanders that do that now. But I will I will admit it does change the game. It's way better than what was the old legendary werewolf? Uh or uh Ulrich? Ul yeah, something Ulfric? like that. Not Ulfric. <laughs> Ulfric Stormcloak. Uh who knows? But anyways, he was he's a cool card, but he's not a good, it's not a a good, good card, but not a good commander. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. so and do you have a do you have like a, a favorite like one or two werewolf cards? I mean honestly Tovar is up there. Um and cuz I mean he's just Thank you for turns, beating yourself. <laughs> um I honestly think most of the really good werewolves have come out recently and like Crimson Vow and um and Estrad Midnight Hunt. Um I think there's just a lot of really good ones to pick from there. Um, I think it's called Tovalar's Hunt Master or something like that. It's like for four, two green. It's at like a six, six. And then like when he enters the battlefield, you create two tokens. And whenever he transforms into his werewolf self, you create two werewolf tokens. Um, or two wolf, two, two, two wolf tokens. Yes, you've established yeah, that. My bad. And so you're just going to create keep creating more 2-2 wolf tokens. I will say Day-Night is not that annoying in Standard, uh, but in Commander, it's so hard to keep track of. It is, yeah. But more do you so. think that's easier or harder than uh, the old way of doing werewolves? Because it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. I think this way's easier. 
<laughs> Especially with Tovalar as the commander, it's definitely easier. Yeah, that's true, because Tovalar can just keep them transformed. So Basically. <clears throat> right, or just or just turn at night when it comes to your turn if you have enough wolves. Sure. Well, thank you, Steven, for talking about werewolves. For I like werewolves. No, <laughs> what can I say? No, I, All right, Sean, why, 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 don't you, uh, why don't you start us off with a card? Okay, so like right off the bat, two types of creatures that come to mind are angels and demons. I was really big on that because black has always been my favorite color. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, so anyway... Um, yeah, angels and demons have always been like my go-to when I first started and didn't really know a lot of good combos for magic. Um, the first mythic that I ever got was Mindrack Demon, and I just remember just being obsessed with the art. Um, and like the card itself isn't great, but the art was just so cool. So I just really love the art for a lot of the angels and demons cards. Plus there's just something satisfying about the first mythic you pull from a pack well i didn't pull i traded oh okay yeah Yeah. but um yeah i just really really liked the art and i've just always you know just the whole like you know making an angels and demons deck i'm sure it wasn't good but it was just really cool and of course another card that i really liked was uh avacyn angel of hope uh flying vigilance i knew it (laughs) when angel of hope and other permanents you control uh are indestructible so flying vigilance it is an eight cost which is a lot it's an eight eight uh, so. i need that card for my my shadrix deck how much is that card uh That's a lot yeah <laughs> let me see i i bought one for my battle box and 50 dollars yeah it hurt the wallet yeah. it's not a cheap card <sighs> so uh good, yeah, good, i mean good it's luck. really good yeah, good luck with that but uh well, yeah they just need to reprint it yeah i don't know why they won't reprint it it's but, only been reprinted like twice yeah but angels and demons have always been my go-to even though like really i don't really play it anymore because it's really hard to make like a good deck with it with especially with how expensive they are just have kelly as your commander what yeah but i don't know i feel like since i did it when i first started i kind of want to experiment with some other stuff so i mean i'll probably go back to it but almost any angel or demon card that i see i just instantly i'm just like yes because you know i just that's like a I think it's cool that a lot of our early cards were all tribal themes that get like relatively good support. Like especially now that Tovalar's a thing, werewolves is pretty well supported. Angels and demons is a relatively well supported uh, tribe. Uh, and then for me, uh, zombies would be the thing for me because I remember right, Steven, we need to kick out Morgan. <laughs> I tried playing a zombie deck back when standard back in standard. Uh, like I had like a delirium deck um, that was very zombie focused. Uh, my first ever. And I remember uh Kalidus Trader of Get was a game changer for me. Like and it, it came out one or two sets before we started playing, but when we were playing standard, it was still legal and it came standard. Came out summer of 2016. Yeah. It was still legal and standard when we started playing Magic. And uh I remember seeing it in a cards shop and I was like, "Oh my word, I have to have that card." Uh, game-changing card, so powerful. And back then, it, it, I don't think it's this much now, but back then it was like 20 bucks. And for me, who was just getting into the game, I was like, that's a lot to spend on a piece of cardboard, <laughs> which now I, I do that all the time. Uh, <laughs> it still uh, but, is, though. Yeah, but but uh, Kalidus is just such a cool card. And then when I started playing Commander, the first <laughs> deck I ever built was a Kalidus deck, uh, which was a, kind of a zombie-focused deck. And then... Uh, Eventually, I made uh, the Scarab God. The Scarab God? Yeah, the Scarab God, the commander for that deck. But Kalidus is still in the deck, which arguably I should take Kalidus out because he exiles cards and Scarab God wants them in the graveyard so I can steal them from my opponents. However, Kalidus is just so cool and means so much to me on an emotional, personal level that I just I feel like I can't take it out. But... Yeah, what where where do we want to want to take this now? Like, do we just want to spitball some other ideas, or do you have other cards in 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 this topic to talk about? I thought we'd just end the podcast right here. Okay, <laughs> no. Um, so I'm probably gonna talk <clears throat> a lot about Eldridge Moon because that was the second set that I started, and it was the first pre-release I ever went to. So I have a special place in my heart for that set. It is. I just really like. <clears throat> yeah i'm dying but uh yeah i just really like a lot of a lot of the art and i just really liked the theme for that set and it was a little weird because i mean a lot of the cards you combine together 
and that was just really weird at the time. A lot of people were making jokes that Magic was becoming Yu-Gi-Oh with uh, a lot of <laughs> all the melt cards, yeah, and a the lot of flip cards, and um, Bristola Voice of Nightmares was just really cool. I mean, the art for that card is just really sick. <laughs> and it's love, also I love that card so much. It's just it's really good. Uh, flying First Strike, Vigilance, Life Link. Your opponents can't cast spells with a convert a mana cost three or less. That's it's nine ten. I mean, that's just insane so beautiful <laughs> yeah i don't know just eld the, just the concept of eldritch moon i feel like it took shadows and just like twisted it and made it a lot more weird and like unique so i think that's i one just of the love well, which is nice really, it's thematic too because you know the e emrakul was there on innistrad manipulating things turning things into uh eldrazi man that original which emrakul, first of all so cool. which first of all um i love the that was another thing. I love the um, werewolf horrors. Those are really cool. Well, at least in design. Um, but I also just really love, like, just the big, thick, obnoxious, gross Eldrazi. Like, Emrakul. Uh, I really like Kozilek and Ulamog. You tap that? Anyways. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, you tap it, like, attacking. Uh huh. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you guys know that we're kind of in the minority? for liking that block because a lot of people who were playing before we started playing said that um emmercool and all of the eldrazi stuff ruined in Estrad. oh because no. it like messed up the theme yeah i know no, I'm, I'm i know sure we're a lot in, of people do say that yeah we're, I, I, we're definitely in the minority for liking the shadows block but that's when we started playing well so. actually a lot of people love shadows over in Estrad, but a lot of people don't like I, I i don't think a lot of people like eldridge a part of the reason why we like it so much is because of like nostalgia yeah for sure that was the first i remember like all three of us went and like we stayed there really late and it was the first pre-release we ever went to so yeah it was i a mean cool think, experience. think about it like this how many cards from eldritch moon have had a lasting impact other than liliana the last hope and emrakul the promised end no probably not yeah so. that, those are kind of the only two really big game changers from that set but decimator of the provinces oh that's a that's a <laughs> that's a haymaker in our play group but most people who have money would rather just play uh crater hoof behemoth yeah that's true yeah but the thing I is i don't have money <laughs> the reason why the reason why magic as a game is so great is because it's not a matter of winning or losing it's a matter of making playing the game you want to play yeah like that's why a lot of people and it's such a diverse love, game that we can all play the way we want to play yeah because the game has lasted so long and there's so many different archetypes and themes it, yeah i mean i want to win don't get me wrong but like <laughs> I mean, if I lose and somebody does a really cool combo and I'm like, oh, OK, you know, like you, it's cool to witness that. It's just that's why magic's so cool is because you can just do whatever you want with it. I, I made myself a list of my top 10 favorite magic cards. I'm trying to see if there's anything else from that era of magic. OK, so number five on my list was new scrap mob, which uh, six mana uh, zero zero zombie that comes in with five plus one plus one counters. Uh, and then every time a player, any player, plays a spell, you remove a counter and create a 2-2 a two -two zombie token. And that's just a great way to fill your board really fast. And it's even better in decks where you can put more counters on it or uh, in my uh, Scarab God deck. Then I can, once it dies, I can exile from a graveyard, bring it back uh, as a 4-4. Four -four. It's just a, it's such a cool card. <laughs> um do, do you guys have any other favorite cards specifically from that era? Like from when we first started playing, like from Eldridge Moon or uh, even like the fir the few sets after that? What was after that? Like Kaladesh? Amonkhet wasn't too much later than that. I really liked the theme of Amonkhet in Hour of Devastation, um, just with the Egyptian Yeah, know, it was a theme. cool theme. It was real, And I love the gods from it, uh, especially Ronas. I love Ronas. Um, I do have a mono green. Ronos deck. And that's just really fun to bust out every once in a while. Pause. But yeah, the uh, Lotus God. That that was also yeah, I made. The, yeah, that yeah was, that's so cool. That was the first commander deck I ever built, like from scratch. Because honestly, I don't really build a lot of commander decks from scratch anymore. Because I just don't have the time or the money to do it. But uh, Lotus God was the first one I ever built, and it was it's, yeah, I've, it's a really cool card. I've talked about Scarab God like three times already, but I guess he's also from Hour of Devastation. So. Um. Amonikent was really cool. I I think that was the second pre-release I ever went to, and I really enjoyed it. I think I went to, I went to almost every pre-release within the the like 
first two years. I think there were a couple I missed. I didn't go to uh, one of the Ixalan sets. I didn't go to. Uh, and then one of the Guilds of Ravnica sets I didn't go to. But in that first two years that I was playing, I, I went to almost every pre-release. Um, speaking of pre-release, that Shadows Over Innistrad was our all, all three of our first pre-release. Eldridge, not Shadows. Oh, yeah, sorry. And uh, I remember... Uh, Steven pulled uh, Tamio, mm. and uh, that is such a sweet card it that I always card. try to play it, but I never actually have like a really good place to play it. And I remember, uh, uh, yeah, I've only used Jason, 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 Yeah, I remember JC, JC was, was looking the, through he, Steven's deck. He was looking deck. through looking yeah. through Steven's deck, and he's like, <laughs> garbage. trash, garbage, <laughs> butt kiss. And then he saw Tamio. He's like, oh, that card's cool. Trash keeps going. Kill, <laughs> trash, kill yourself. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I only use Tamiya's ultimate like three times ever. Yeah, and I've I've tried so hard to to play that card, and it's just it it reads cool, but it's actually not that powerful. And then it being specifically three colors makes it really restricted in what kinds of decks you can play it in. Yeah, so, so I have it in my Atraxa deck, and that's it. So kind of to shift things a little away from Eldridge, uh, the first like real like actual like competitive deck that I ever built was Eight Whack. And that's pretty much where my love for goblins started. Whack. No, do you have a favorite whack. goblin? Whack. Yes, I do have a favorite goblin. Well, it's kind of tied. Uh, goblin Chieftain and Goblin Pile Driver are like two of my favorites. But now that I'm like I'm in the middle of building a Krenko deck, and I just ordered so many goblins and just kind of just checking out like what cards that I haven't used. A lot of the decks or a lot of the cards that I put in the same goblin deck that i i put into the cranko deck like pile driver and chieftain and dragon fodder and i don't know what it is about goblins but like just it's the concept's just so simple and it's just really fun to play and there's just something sad so satisfying about having just like a a gazillion one ones and just swinging out like i don't know it is it is really satisfying to have a giant board state or making an infinite goblin combo like that that that's up there i have a uh my quote cedh commander deck uh it's not quite cedh but it has an infinite combo with astronauts altar uh nims death mantle and uh i think it's sling gang sling gang lieutenant uh and it just creates infinite goblin tokens and then i sack them all to drain my opponents for infinite damage it's beautiful yeah goblins are just so fun Go goblins are fun and there's just so many great cards like uh i don't know how to pronounce it but it like gives all your creatures haste hammer of perforos um quest for the goblin king or lord i can't remember which one so some of that stems from uh your constructed days like 60 card format so let's let's uh spend a little bit of time on that steven like you you mostly play commander but you did used to have like a standard deck a modern deck did you have a favorite card from any of those decks well when it was in standard i used ronos um i kind of built like it was basically like an amonkhet simic deck and so I had a couple Sphinx in there. Uh, I had Ronas, and I think I had, I think I had Kefnet in there too. Um, that deck was really fun. I like Simic. I think that's just a, it's just a really good combo. For a while, I had a Life Gain deck that was modern, and it was green white. It was never that good, um, but I, it was fun playing it. Do you have a favorite card from that deck? I love a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Yeah. Um, that card is... I just love a Johnny. He's probably my favorite Planeswalker. Like, just look at him. Well, and also, when we first started playing Modern... It's kind of sus, bro. <laughs> when, when we uh, first started playing Modern, we were not willing to spend hundreds of dollars on good decks, so our decks were really slow. And so... It, Your deck was really slow. It wasn't like... it. It, it wasn't impossible for you to get up to ultimate a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Like, it wasn't often that that happened, but when it did, <laughs> yikes. Uh, I have a couple constructed favorites. Uh, I have an Abzan mid-range modern deck uh, with Siege Rhino at the helm. It, it, he's like the big the mind blower of the deck. And he he's probably my favorite magic card ever. Wait, who? Siege uh, Rhino. This, this bitch right here? Yeah. 
Wait, let me see it. Uh, for one, a white, a black, and a green. Four or five trample. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent loses three life and you gain three life. Let me see the art. That's your favorite card ever? Let me it's see the so art. fun. <laughs> Dude, it's, the art is whack. I'll be is. honest. It, Morgan, you it's need to so rethink fun. your life. It's really? so fun. And it's such a fun deck to play. Like back and it's when three that. colored mana. So not white, only, black, green. Yeah, Abzan mid range. You guys need to pay attention to the modern meta. <laughs> When this card was legal and standard, it was one of the best decks in standard. When it, uh, around that same time in modern, it was literally the best deck in modern. Uh, and then nowadays, because of the Modern Horizon sets and all the shakeups that modern has gotten, gotten, it's also just a good deck again now. Um, but just that deck in general, like that obviously is like the Haymaker. Uh, and then there's cards like Ephemerate that you can use to blink it and so you can get that activated ability more than once. Um, and then Thrag Tusk is also a great card in that deck because it's a uh, five mana five three. Uh, when it enters the uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain life, and then when it leaves the battlefield, uh, you uh, create a three three token. But Ephemerate also works with that card, so you can blink it and get that uh, more than one. So it's just a really fun deck. So. Uh, I, I wish our play group played modern more because uh, it's well, just a really fun yeah, setup. Yeah, I'm in the process of making a good modern, like an actual paper modern deck. But yeah. uh, that card's fine, but I guess you have a hard on for rhinos, apparently. It's not even the rhinos thing. It's just uh, part of it's the nostalgia and the respect for modern. But then also, uh, once you actually have the full deck together, it is just such a fun deck to play. Like, it's not even like a great deck it's like okay it's like a tier two deck but it's really really fun to play well back to modern uh because uh a while back i actually was gonna make eight rack uh because that i don't know just like milling the other players deck sounded really fun to me and it, i thought it'd be funny because it would piss them off Boo. so but uh liliana of the veil is also one of my favorite planeswalkers uh, plus one, each player discards a card. Minus two, target player sacrifices a creature. Minus six, separate all permanent target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of his or her choice. And I don't know, just the way the deck played, it just looked fun. Because I really don't play a lot of control decks, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of change it up. And I mean, I love black, so mono black is always a pleasure to play. I am so glad that Loris got banned in modern because... With Loris ban or with Loris uh, legal in modern, it was so hard to play any permanents that were more than one or two mana, because it's like why would I play a three or four mana cost card uh, permanent when I could just have Loris as a companion in the deck? Uh, so having Loris ban, it's like oh people can start pulling out their Lilianas again. Like Liliana used to be one of the most popular cards in modern. But because Loris was legal for so long, no one played Liliana. So now that Loris is banned, it's nice to see that Modern is just in a good spot again. It's still $85, dang. It's crazy expensive. Dang. I still own, I believe, at least one copy. So I need to either like buy two or three. So Yeah. But uh, anyway, I think this is a good point to uh, wrap it up. So, uh, Stave, if you want to give your input on some more cards, uh, we all know that you haven't played Modern very much because you just suck. So, do you want to <laughs> give us maybe like some more standard well, so, cards so, or maybe some legacy cards that you like? Yeah, so Steven, if there was ever a... Um, or Pioneer. Is there a card do you... Here's, here's a good way to phrase that. Is there a card that you like, Steven that you wish you had an excuse to play more in any format in modern or like for me siege rhino is terrible in commander but in constructed it's awesome are there cards like that for you where it's like we mostly play commander so this card's not good but if i didn't play only commander i would love to play this card is there a card like that for you i don't, I don't know uh, like do you own any cards that you wish you could play more Steven is the king of awkward long pauses. <laughs> oh, that's facts. Just wait just a little bit longer. Oh, my God. Uh, Sean, do you have any? Uh, <laughs> Sean, while he's thinking for the next 10 years, Sean, do you have any other cards that you wish you could play more? Um, I haven't played Pioneer a whole lot. That's another format that I want to get into more because I have a couple Pioneer of friends cool. that want to play. And I came across a deck, Rakdos Sacrifice, that I'm probably going to build over the summer. 
So I guess, and I've known about that card for a bit. Uh, I haven't really had an excuse to play it, but it's a card that I wanted to experiment with. So I guess what's that's, the card? Ra- uh, let me pull it up real quick. The deck is Rakdos Sacri- yeah, Sacrifice. Yeah, I, I know but, the I know the deck. I just don't know what specific cards you mean. Uh, I'll pull it up real quick. Weird. There's a the new ob the new ob Nixilis from the Streets of New Capenna is going to be so good in that deck because you can just get so many good sack outlets in that. For me, I think my favorite card that I haven't got to talk about yet is Muldroth of the Gravetide, uh, which I briefly had a brawl deck over, and now it's like maybe my favorite commander deck. Um, I didn't try playing it in standard, but I did crack it in a pack at pre-release, and I tried playing it in a deck, and it did okay um so that's probably my favorite so you didn't win no no i got uh oh okay third or fourth at the pre-release but there weren't that many people there so it wasn't so like third or fourth at a pre-release you're like oh that's pretty impressive but i think there were only like nine or ten people there so yeah (laughs) but uh the card that i was talking about is mayhem devil oh yeah it's a a one black red and it's from uh, War of the Spark, which is I actually think is a really cool set. Uh, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent Mayhem Devil, deals one damage to any target. And I mean, like, it's an uncommon, and it's not, like, super powerful, but there are ways that you can do with it. Dude, that I card also, gets played so much. It was really played in Standard. It yeah. gets a lot of play in Pioneer. I have it in my uh, my uh, Thraxum Lundar deck. It's just, it's so sweet. Yeah, I also just really love the art. It is I, sweet I, I know art. that, like, it's it doesn't really matter, but, like, if a Magic card has really sick art, and it's also really good. I'm probably just going to play it more just because I like showing off the art. Yeah, Because exactly. like, I can just pull like a Yu-Gi-Oh and just like slam it down and just be like, it's time to do it. In the last few months, I've been a little bit more willing to spend a couple more dollars to get a version of a card that has art I like better. That's the thing about art is it's, it's uh, subjective. But that's that's what's so great about magic, honestly, is it's everything in the game is, for the most part, subjective. Like you can play a card just because you like the art or just because it's a, a creature type you like, even if the card's not good. Yeah, we all have uh, our so. creatures that we love that we love. Morgan obviously has a hard on for rhinos. I have a hard on for goblins. It's more for Steven, zombies. <laughs> uh, zombies. Steven has a hard on for werewolves. So we all know he's obviously team Jacob over team Edward. So. No, those movies are just straight trash. <laughs> well, from what you've gathered, you obviously have a thing for those werewolves. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't know if we have any other cards that we specifically wanted to talk about, but yeah, make sure you guys let us know in the comments. If you guys have any uh, favorite Magic the Gathering cards, let us know, and uh, let us know why, because uh, again, it's a lot of it's subjective. Maybe you really like a card that no one else knows about, and we'd, we'd love to know why. And normally we would do a, a quick Q&A at the uh, end of uh, our podcast episode, but uh, we didn't know what our topic was until like yesterday. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't we didn't make a, a post on social media. But if you guys want to send us questions, you can always leave us a comment down in the description. It doesn't have to be about the topic we're, uh, we're talking about that week. It can be about anything nerd related and we'll, we'll love to answer it. Leave a comment down below or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And make sure uh, to dare to resist drugs and yeah, alcohol. Absolutely. Oh, and leave very hateful comments towards morgan yes all right uh, do you guys have uh, any 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 last thoughts before we wrap up this week it's morphin time it's morphin time all right we'll see you next week bye